When it comes to making HTTP requests inside of your JavaScript codes, you can use a variety of different options. You can use things like XML HTTP request, you can use a third party library, and more recently, you can use Fetch. So what exactly is Fetch? Well, to start with, we can provide a link such as the JSON placeholder API, and we'll use slash posts for this. And this is going to be the API that you're looking to interact with. And as you can imagine, because fetch is promise based, we can say dot then, and we'll then have access to the response. So we can get the JSON from the response if we say res.json, and that is a function. And at that point, we can log out the posts. I'm going to surround this inside of a get posts function. And now whenever we call get posts, it will of course, return us a promise that navigates to our rest API returns back the JSON, i.e. the body from that API. And then of course, just logs it out to the console at this point. So if we head over to our JavaScript console now, and if we hit that fetch data button that I've made, we can see that when we call that function, we do of course get the data. We get the body of the post, the ID, the title, and of course the user ID for whoever made that post. As you can see, if we look in our network tab, we can see exactly when that request was made, as well as the response as we'd expect. So this is obviously a get request. We're not posting anything to the server. We're simply requesting it from the server. We can change the method in which we can interact with this. For example, if we made a new function called new post, and that would take in a post and we would return a new fetch pointing out the same URL, but this time we want to customize that request. But before going much further, I want to navigate over to the Mozilla Developer Network documentation about using Fetch. There's a massive variety of examples, which you can see. If you'd like to really go into depth about how Fetch works and the variety of different use cases, I definitely suggest these docs. But for now, it would be a good idea to make some options. So the options will allow us to pass these options to the fetch call. And the method that we want to use is now post. By default, it equals to get. So that's why we don't have to specify it when we simply want to get the posts. For the body, we'd need to specify a new post. So this is the post that comes in here. One important thing when it comes to the body is that the body has to be stringified. So let's add json.stringify and we want to stringify the new post. Next up, we're going to set some headers. So we can say new headers. And the headers that we want to use here is the content type. And we're going to set that to application slash JSON. So when we come to using this method here, we can replace that for a variety of other things. So this could be put, this could be delete. But for now, we'll keep it at post. Let's pass these options to our fetch call. So you'll see now that this fetch has these options. And if we were expecting a response, we could convert that to JSON. We could then, if we want to do something at this stage, we'll simply log it for now. And if there are any errors, we can catch an error. So for now, once again, we'll simply say console.error. We'll then say error and log out the error to the console. So now the final thing to adding a new post is of course making that post variable. So let's make a title all about fetch. The body of the post is fetch is so cool. And our user ID might be something like one. We can then make a new post passing in that post and by doing so, you can see that we have indeed made that network request. So let's run our function and send that post request to the server. You can see that the post has been made. It has the ID of 101 because there's only 100 posts in the dataset. 
and any more posts are of course above that 100 number. And if we look at the exact line of code, we can see that this was the response after it had been converted to the JSON body. So it wasn't an error and everything did work as intended. Now the same then goes for modifying something. So if we used something like put, we just change the method from post and instead we'd use put. And finally, when it comes to the delete method, we do that once again. So without making this too long of a video, this is the essential use cases for fetch. We want to post, we want to get, we want to put, and of course we want to delete. There are other ways and other methods in which we can customize fetch even more. And I recommend you check out the documentation to see how you can do that. And until next time, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more videos. And of course, let me know what you'd like to see in the next video inside of the comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Oh, this new crazy mother.